Jim Barron's Rams have had more than their share of key injuries this season, causing them to really struggle. Providence College has one of the better one-two punches in the country with Ryan Gomes and Dwight Brewington. But when these two teams get together, you can usually throw out the records. It's the Rumble and Rody, the Friars, and the Rams, and it's next on ESPN+. Welcome to Providence, Rhode Island, the big city tucked inside the nation's smallest state. And in terms of basketball rivalries, nothing small about the one today. It is the Rhode Island Rams taking on the Providence College Fires from right here at the Dunkin' Donut Center. And hi, everyone. Welcome to Courtside here in the building they call the Dunk. I'm Andy Freed along with Ron Perry. As rivalries go around, there's none bigger than this in this state of Rhode Island the Rams and the Friars. They love to get after it. They have over the years, and there's a lot of pride on the line, so you can usually throw records out. Should be a good ball game here again this afternoon. Now, when you look ahead of the Big East season, and including this ball game today, Dwight Brewington, Ryan Gomes, they're the tandem for the Providence College Friars to do well if the Friars are going to do well. Now, that's right. Dwight Brewington playing with a lot of confidence for the Friars right now. He's in the starting lineup, shooting the ball very well from the perimeter. He is rangy. He can also drive. He's the second leading scorer behind Gomes on the team this year, and he'll fill it up today. But Gomes, no doubt, is the go-to guy. He's the preseason pick for player of the year in the Big East Conference. Can shoot from the outside, and he's very tough to stop in the paint. Look for the Friars to go to him early and often in this one because he poses matchup problems for everyone. They're the one-two scorers, Gomes and Brewington. Both had big games in the preseason NIT against the likes of Wake Forest and Michigan. Of course, Gomes returns from last year. Brewington fills the shoes of Sheku Kaba, who, of course, left after the, the past season. Now for the Rams. It's a team ravaged by injuries. No Dewan Robinson, no Jamal Wise. They need Scott Hazelton. He's got to come up big today for the Rams. He is there. Clearly their leader on the floor, leads the team in scoring, can score with his back to the basket. He can fill it up with that medium range jump shot. Also can handle the ball in the open floor. Hazelton needs to come up big for the Rams today to pull off the upset here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Needs to have a big game. He's had a couple of them already this year. Notch 23 points against Manhattan. Needs that kind of effort today. And this is a team that's not been scoring much. They got 68 against Boston University in the loss. That's a good output for the Rams of late because they just have not been filling it up in the early season this year. All right, it's the event that everybody in Southern New England seems to have a rooting interest in. The Friars and the Rams tip off is coming up. Ever G6 arriving daily at your Pontiac dealer. And by Advance Auto Parts for the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. And Hyundai with quality that lets them offer America's best warranty 10 years, 100,000 miles. From the Dunkin' Donuts Center in Providence, Rhode Island, it's the 115th meeting between these two teams the University of Rhode Island Rams, the Providence College Friars, and I think they might just blow the roof off this place today. This is a jam-packed, sold-out arena. And as we look at the starting lineup, Scott Hazelton, Marcel Montplaisir, who finds himself in the starting lineup today, J.R. Moore, Parfait Bate, and uh, Sullivan as well, Tyrese Sullivan. This is a lineup that's changed quite a bit for Rhode Island. Meanwhile, Providence is pretty much stuck with the, the same guys. Ryan Gomes, Tuka Koti, Randall Hankey, the freshman out of New York. Donnie McGrath has started every game since coming here, and Dwight Brewington. That's right. I think Jimmy Barron still searching for that right combination for URI. Montplaisir coming off that double-double. Today he needs a team that will put points on the board. In his fourth year at URI, he's been a rebuilder of programs. And right now, with Dewan Robinson out of the lineup with that foot injury and Jamal Wise, the knee, trying to hang on this month and get those guys back. And Timmy Walsh, of course, in his seventh year at Providence. His team comes in four and three. They play very well against the big teams within that surprising loss with a very poor second half against Winthrop. Yeah, they played very well in the preseason NIT. They won their first few ball games this year. They've got a good squad. They let up against Winthrop. They should come out fired up today. Randall Hankey wins the tip into the backcourt. Donnie McGrath runs the point for the Friars. 
And there's Gomes' first touch of the day. Underneath, Hanke misses the shot. He made the open move. Got to get that one down. Fronting by URI out of the man-to-man, -man, and the freshman just couldn't put the finishing touches on that nice inbound, so that nice entry pass. Ty Sullivan runs the point for the Rams. Driving is Hazelton. Little scoop pass around Gomes, intended for Montclair, but he let him too far. Friars open up man to man, and Tukakoti draws that tough assignment against Scott Hazelton. All the matchups between these two teams. Rhode Island has won two in a row. They haven't won three in a row in 50 years, so they're trying to do that today. Friars lead this series. I tell you, these teams have gotten after it over a hundred times. So, a lot of history here, and a lot of a uh, lot of pride on the line in Rhode Island today. McGrath finds himself open, top of the key, and Mr. Gomes can't follow. Cote in traffic, 2-0 Friars. Well, if you think of keys today, Rhode Island, pretty good rebounding team. They've got to keep Providence off those offensive boards and limit the Friars to one shot each time down the floor and then execute themselves in their offensive end. Gomes went for the steal. Montplaisir leans it up from 16. The rebound to the freshman, Hankey. Nice job by Hankey. They'll keep an eye on the battle of the boards today. So far, Providence looking good. Brewington not shy at all. High low pass to Hankey, and it's 4 nothing Providence. Oh, that was a sweet move. We talked about Dwight Brewington playing with a lot of confidence. That was a sweet penetration in dish to the big freshman. And he shoots it up quite a bit throughout the game. Good for him to get up and then still find the open man. Well, you'll find next time the defense might be more honest and not come rushing at you and the shot will be open. Marcus here with the slam dunk, 4-2. to two. Nice answer by URI to come back, not only to come back with a score, but an emphatic one with the slam. And that just shows what kind of emotion this game is going to have. As he was slamming that down, you could see some of his teammates pumping their fists. They know they're in it today, too. Yeah, that definitely gets the guys going when you get an emphatic dunk. Keith Kikoti has been, and he's a very consistent veteran ball player for Tim Walsh's club. Like the job he does, and he always seems to pick up a tough defensive assignment. Today again, it's Scott Hazelton. But he doesn't get headlines, but a guy that just every night seems to do things to help the Friars and their performance. He's the kind of guy you refer to as kind of that lunch pail guy underneath. He works hard on the boards, not afraid to dive after the loose balls. Shot clock down to 10. Driving is Pite. And knocked onto the floor, he'll shoot two. Well, the Friars have, you can see it here, every matchup, they've got better size. They're just they're longer, they're taller. But if you penetrate, good things happen. Right there, Brewington did it for the Friars with a great dish to the freshman, Randall Hanky. And at the other end, the Rams answered. Montplaisir with that dunk inside. Both teams going right at each other early in this one. Parfait Bate. The freshman from Cameroon in Africa shoots to 60% in the early go. And ups that at 6 to 3. Neither team shooting all that well for the free throw line early on this season. Both under 65%. And Bate, 2 for 2. It's a two point game. Job by Bate. He had 14 in the last game against the Boston University Terriers. Earning the start, making the free throw. A little pressure by the Rams. Free quarter court. And up and in is Randall Hankey off the pass from McGrath. And that's what you want to do against pressure. Pass the basketball, get it to the middle and then the side, and then try to score, which the Friars did right there. Providence broke that pressure with the pass, seemingly with at least relative ease. Hazelton, fall away. No, and the tip won't go, and a follow won't go, but going to the line will be J.R. Moore. Hankey picks up the personal. Actually, Brewington picks up the personal. That is his first. J.R. Moore out of Worcester Academy with that man, Dwight Brewington. Both have that fun institution. Some big frontline guys for Jim Barron's club. You've got J.R. at 6'8". Big, strong kid. The Fries also have got to box out in this game, not allow second chances for the Rams. Jim Barron talking it over with Ty Sullivan, his point guard. Ty had 15 in the first game this year against Brown. He had only eight points all of last year as Moore makes that second free throw. So guys are stepping up. 
The Rams are a team that's gotten out of sync offensively until their last game against Boston U, so we'll see how they come out today. In the early going, three and a half minutes, eight to five Friars. This is a great matchup right there. Hazelton trying to put the clamps on Ryan Gomes. I don't think anyone really puts the clamps on him because at the end of every game, it seems like Ryan has a way of putting the numbers up. Every night, it seems like you look up, he's got a double-double by the end. And on certain nights, it's like, when did that happen? Yeah, the thing that's right. The thing that's nice about the way he does it is he takes it out of the flow of the game, doesn't force it. He's a great free throw shoot. He draws a lot of fouls as well. Hazelton on him hard, and Montplaisir picks up the foul as well on Cote. You can see the attention that Gomes draws, too, when he gets the basketball. Yeah, I love that bounce pass there by Gomes. Used his left hand on the left side of the court. Bounce pass, tough to steal. And the Rams pull out the steal anyway. Ahead to Montplaisir, too hard. Hazelton under the basket. Can't get it to go. <laughs> Sullivan comes out of the pack with it anyway. 5'8", <laughs> he got the offensive board on that long rebound. He had the right idea in the break. He just let his man Montplaisir too much. Nice pass underneath, blocked as Moore had it. Montplaisir in traffic again. He's got it blocked by Hanke. It'll stay to Rhode Island with a shot clock at 15. And that'll bring us to our first official's timeout. A little more than four minutes gone by here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Three-point lead for Providence. Just getting started on this interstate rivalry, the Rhode Island Rams, Providence College Friars, home team. I guess it's hard to say which one is exactly the home team, <laughs> but we know that guy is the crowd favorite, Ryan Gomes, who has limited touches, but look at what he's about to do this year. Unbelievable. Look at the company he's in, huh? Jimmy Walker, Eric Murdoch, and there's Ryan Gomes, number nine all time, has a chance. Only those two guys, Jimmy Walker and Murdoch, have gone over 2,000, chance to become the all-time leading scorer here at Providence. He's a little more than 450 points to do that this year. Certainly a possibility. Absolutely. You look at the last couple of years he's had. If he keeps playing the way he is, he will end up being in the number one spot. Sullivan partially blocked, I believe. And Rhode Island gets a fresh 35. Remember, they had just 15 to shoot out of that timeout. Yeah, McGrath at 6'4". He's got... Eight inches on Ty Sullivan, but he's very quick, Sullivan. Hazelton with Cote on him. Vite misses it. And another offensive rebound. He gets his own miss. Long shots generate long rebounds. Everyone has to be committed to box out at the defensive end. That ball will spring way out there. Guards have to do their jobs as well. Hazelton on Cote. Got it. Bingo. That was pretty good defense there by Cote, but... Hazelton right now feeling it. He's, he's had some injuries with his feet the last couple of years. The transfer for, from the University of Connecticut. He knows his team is counting on him here today. You can sense his knowledge of the responsibility he has today. Dwight Brewington from three. Fouled and he will shoot three. Dwight Brewington. For the first time we saw Brewington, the first shot he ever took as a collegiate player, he made a three-pointer. Here's that move by Hazelton again. Yeah, Hazelton with that, just that quick first step's all he needed. He's tall, he's long at 6'8". Gets that quick shake right there, bang, and lets it go just before Cote can get a hand up in his face. That last foul was Montplaisir away from the ball. Away from the ball, thank you. Ryan Gomes, three-pointer, 11-7 Providence. <laughs> well, we showed that before the game. Gomes can score from the inside as well as the perimeter. And he's looking for his three this year as well. That's his 12th three on the season. Sullivan tries to answer, can't do it. And another offensive rebound for the Rams. They're doing a nice job off the glass, and that's where they can stay in the game. And a nice job. They're also working some clock if something quick doesn't show up. Down the lane goes Sullivan. Still can't connect. Again, he made the move but couldn't finish. Wide open. I think he was so open, couldn't believe it. McGrath to Gomes. Hankey's been active and is fouled. And he will shoot too. J.R. Moore picks it up. Well, Hankey's been very involved in the Providence office offense early with some passes. But Ty Sullivan last time, great penetrating drive, but you've got to put the finishing touch on it. I don't think he could believe how wide open he was. <laughs> you do see that from time to time. He's been doing a nice job this year. He's primarily been shooting the three offensively. He made five of them against Brown. He had a three 
three-point made field goal game against Seton Hall. So look for him from the perimeter. But that was a great penetration that time. Randall Hankey has started all eight of the games of his freshman year. Hits one of two. And Hankey's going to go to the bench for the first time today. We'll see Herbert Hill and uh, Gerald Brown check in as well. That was a nice job by Hankey to start this ball game while five points active out there. Good start for the freshman. Tuka Koti also went out for Providence. Fall away off the front of the rim. And out of bounds, it'll stay with the Rams. So they're getting second and third and fourth opportunities on these offensive sets. Yeah, it seems almost every time down, they're at least getting a couple of chances at the goal. And, you know, they've only got seven points so far. So one of the struggles for URI has been converting, shooting just 38% coming into this game. They need to make the most of these opportunities here today. And with Sullivan going, now look who's coming in. John Lucky is into the game for the Rams. Now, they, they were really worried about him, really questionable coming into this after that bad back spill that he took in the BU game, but must have loosened up with the lights on, said, let me get into this thing. Hard to sit out if you're one of the members of these two teams. Good D by the Friars. Brewington. Brown a three-point attempt too strong, and Hazleton on the glass. It's always tough to come right into the game and hit that shot. I thought Brewington should have found him earlier. Ripped away, Gomes picks it out of the air. And Hazleton right back, but he fouled him to get it. That could be big for URI if it was Hazleton. No, wow. it is Mack that picked it up. Otherwise, that would have been number two on Hazleton. We'll see Charlie Birch come in for the first time for Providence today. And Jim Barron gives Scott Hazleton a rest. You can see him on the bench right there. And, you know, again, you, you can't, if you're Rhode Island, have him even thinking about in, <laughs> being in foul trouble today. He needs to play a lot of minutes and play well for the Rams. Will Daniels, the freshman from Hyde Park, FDR High School, checks in for Rhode Island. 12-7, still early on. It's like a matchup zone now by the Rams. They're all over Gomes though when he goes inside. Gomes slips through Mack and buries it from 17. But what does he do? He steps outside and says, let me shoot the J. And Jim Barron says, hey, let's regroup here. Providence up 14-7 right now. And he's going to get his defense together. Nice start by the Friars. Look at that up fake by Ryan Gomes. He's got backcourt skills. And he's also deadly down inside where he's so tough. He's been so consistent for the Friars. I mean, that's just a great up fake. You know, and I think to play and hone his game for the next level, he's saying, I gotta make some of these jump shots, work on my ball handling, and those are the kind of things you'll see more of from him this year as he gets tuned up for the next level next year. And you can see his emotion coming out today, too. You know, he's, he would be the only Friar to never beat URI if they don't win today. Of all players, that would be a stunner. And Rhode Island coming out very cold offensively, at least from the field. But again, the offensive rebounds have kind of bailed them out a little bit. That's yeah, keeping them in the game. Just two for 13 from the floor, but see out rebounding Providence, 11 to three with nine offensive boards. The key though is they haven't been converting with those second chances. Seven-point lead for Providence. 12 and a half to go, first half. More outside. And no good on the shot by Daniels, and the follow-up is in. Now, one, Mack. one of the things Tim Welsh undoubtedly at half at halftime is going to make an adjustment. Is that guys, we've got to block out on the defensive end right now. URI staying in the game with those boards off of Herbert Hill and out of bounds. So five-point lead for the Flyers. Tuka Koti. Seems like for. Tim Wells, Coatsy is always the, the go-to guy. Of course, Gomes, you know, is going to be the go-to guy. When Welsh needs to settle things down emotionally and from a pace standpoint, Coatsy is the guy he calls on. Oh, he's steady. He's dependable, and there's no doubt that's why a lot of times Tim Welsh will turn him and say, hey, go in there and just kind of calm this thing down. I think I think Hazleton will come back into the game shortly, too, for URI. They, will really, they really need him looking for his shots offensively. Five-point lead here for the Providence College Friars. A little more than eight minutes gone by from the Dunkin' Donuts Center. And with John Lucky into the game, this is what happened earlier in the week. Well, against Boston University, the drive to the basket, the bump in midair. 
You know, no one trying to hurt him there, but boy, I'll tell you, John came down hard. It looked like on his right hip without being able to brace his fall. And I'll tell you, Rhode Island's been really like the, as he says there, the, just the walking wounded this year as you look down the list. And a lot of back problems. They're going to get Dewan Robinson back practicing, hopefully by the end of next week. But wise, maybe not till next year. Tell you what, they need both of those guys badly. Robinson, you know, always in double figures, many times leading the team in scoring a year ago. They need him. They need his leadership in scoring. And wise, a versatile guy that could, you know, really swing into the lane, rebound, and score as well. All right, Rhode Island ball. And tipped out of bounds by Cote. There he is again. You know, one of the ingredients you really do need at this level of college basketball, you really do need from a coaching point of view to have some luck with guys staying healthy. If you lose key guys for big stretches, that is a, a tough, tough thing. You push younger kids to get into the lineup sooner than you might like to. You want to weave them in. Puts a lot of pressure on you early. And you always forget about the guys that are injured but still playing. Right. Now John Lucky, right? He's out there. This is Bitte. Right between the circles. Seen a lot of minutes as a freshman this year. They expect a lot out of him. He's Backing in his Mac. Up and over Cote. Tipped out of bounds. And it looked for a moment like Will Daniels had an open shot, but he got stripped away. Just lost that ball as he went up for it. Great job by Cote, but check it out with Daniels. There he is. Gather it in. And you try to go up with it before you get it. And he lost that ball out of bounds. Kind of gather yourself and then go up strong. Into the game, Deshaun White will come in for the Friars for the first time, a freshman out of Philadelphia. Cardinal Doherty High School. Jim Barron and Tim Welsh, both excellent coaches working it here today. Different defense. 3 2 zone now by the Rams. Winthrop in the second half against Providence. Really gave the Friars problems with the zone. Rams go to it early here today. It made the Friars have to live or die from the outside, and they got so cold. See, I think the guy that you maybe maybe you got to get back in for the Friars on that turnover is McGrath. McGrath, the zone buster. Also the guy at point. Providence really looked tentative that time against the zone. 11-minute mark, still five-point lead for Providence. Is John Lucky. They dump underneath the Mac. White, though, is in his face. Shot clock under 10 for the Rams. Lucky off the glass, never hit the rim, and the Friars will take it. Good defense by the Friars that time. Really made URI take a tough shot. Nice look. Brown back out to Cote. Three ball. Great ball movement by the Friars. The penetration, the kick out. Great job all the way around. And it all started with terrific defense at the other end of the floor. Gomes got it, but the D was great. Check out the handle, huh? The dish. And then Hill with that nice kick out pass. Excuse me, Gerald Brown. Cote, and yeah, that's just nice work. Check out Brown right here. He could go up with it, but he says, no, he can feel the pressure. You set your teammates up for those kind of shots, and and again, in the old days, you didn't see that pass out like that. But with a three-point shot, that's a valuable play. Big basket. Seemed to be checking Gomes out a little bit, his left knee on the bench. So that'll, that'll definitely cause people to hold their breath in Friarland. They see that man sitting down being checked out. Uh, Gomes goes whole games without sitting on the bench. I mean, he'll play 40 minutes a night. Yeah, I mean, four out of the seven games are already coming into this one. He has played the whole game. So he's very durable, very versatile. He's such an even guy. You know, you really, you very, really see him get, you know, we saw a little emotion in him early, but he's, he's really just a steady, consistent ball player. You know a guy's confident in the no-look pass when he never looks, even <laughs> after the pass. <laughs> he just turned away. That's the real no-look. That's right. Rams find themselves down 17-9 here, just about halfway through the first half. Got to get Hazleton involved in this offense. Brewington really guarding him tightly right now. Shot clock is down to five now. And off the glass, it never hit the backboard. Shot clock violation will go back towards Providence. One thing about patience, but a little too much. Rams having a very, very tough time in their half court set. I think Jim Barron said he doesn't really want to get into an up and down track meet against the taller and, uh, you know, just more versatile 
Providence lineup. So the half court set, they're playing some zone right now, but you've got to make shots and get good ones to play this kind of game at the offensive end. And this 9-2 run for the Friars in the last four and a half. They've made seven of the last eight shots. And Brown tried to make it 8-9. Out of bounds, it'll belong to the Rams. Fight for the ball there. Well, you hope with the 2-3 zone or a 3-2 is the Rams have been setting it up that you're in better rebounding position defensively. You've got people down in the paint area. Friars have been playing man-to-man -man the whole half. Brown went for the steal. Tipped it out of bounds. And the pass intended for Randy Brooks. Look at the field goal percentage here early on. 17%. And remember, wow. URI last year, they shot 71% from three alone. You would think with those kind of stats, Andy, that... Providence would be up by about 20. I mean, URI fortune is just 17 to 9 right now because they've been doing a pretty good job, Rhode Island, on the boards. Nice lean in by Mump plays here. Well, no, it's a six point game right now, and, and you've been shooting under 20%. So, Rhodey doing a good job on the defensive end and the backboards. 3 2 zone, actually, with Scott Hazelton, top of the zone. He's long. At 6'8", he's got the, the reach to block father shooters. Cross pass to Cote, buries another three-pointer. He's got 10. Half the points for the Providence College Friars. For Tuka Cote, he is 4 for 4 from the field. Yeah, they've got to get Hazelton involved. I'll tell you what, Brewington denying him beautifully under the basket, number 24. Doing a great job. Missed by Matt. Here come the Friars at the transition, and Hazelton catches up from behind. Back the other way comes Terrence Mack. Stripped away by White, gets it back and banks it in. No call there. Yeah, that was, that could have been called. Mack is a big, strong kid. 6'6", 240. He lowered the shoulder. I thought the second time, yeah, he definitely cleared his man out on that one. Under eight minutes to go. In the first half, seven-point lead for Providence. First one might have been a little cameo, but that second one, he was definitely knocked down. Randy Brooks on the floor to go for the steal against Brown, and it will head the other way. It'll be a Rhode Island ball. When we get back, it is 20 to 13, the Providence College Friars. Seven minutes, 47 seconds to go before halftime. Again, a seven-point lead for the home team. Providence leading by seven here at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. A little less than eight minutes to go. You know, one of the big things for Providence this year, Ryan, is going to be when Gomes is not in the scoring column as much, how much does Tuka Cote pick it up? Well, I think other guys have to step up, and Cote, one of those guys, boy, is he having a great game here this afternoon, though. He's playing very tough defense. He's been covering Scott Hazelton. He can make the three-point shots. He's solid on the backboards. But offensively, he's made a couple of threes, and he's in double figures leading the way so far for the Friars today. Yet to miss from the field. His career high is 17. He's already got 10. Mack on Cote, blocked by Cote. Oh, is he stepping up today? Yeah, he's really he's really doing a great job at both ends of the floor. And, you know, if you're watching this game, a lot of times there's, a, there's attention paid to the scorers and who's making the dazzling plays. But Cote, solid defensively on the backboards and also at the offensive end. He's doing it all. Shot clock already down to 15. No, they did reset it there, okay. Less than seven and a half to go. Seven point lead, here's Sullivan, now Hazelton. Around the arc they go. Back to Brooks. You can see the hesitation with URI. They're trying to just weave it up top. They need penetration. Good looks, but they turn it over again. Brooks got caught in the air. Gomes back in the game. McGrath. Around the perimeter they go. McGrath from three. No good. He hit the glass, in fact. Let's take a look now at the Hyundai Cool Facts. Brewington and J.R. Moore, teammates at Worcester Academy, and of course, Gomes from Waterbury, Connecticut, and Randy Brooks as well, AAU teammates. Yeah, these guys know each other. They play in the AAU leagues together. They see each other playing in the summer, and these guys from Waterbury, we got the Waterbury connection today. <laughs> so even more sort of bragging rights when you get to, uh, get to that level of previous activity playing together. But Donnie McGrath, a guy to me that 
as this season goes along, the Friars need his offense. They need him to hit some of those outside shots. And that trap out on the wing by the Friars helps force a Rhode Island turnover. Nice adjustment by Tim Welsh. A lot of man-to-man -man in the first half, and then, boom, he just snaps the trap on there, and it caught the Rams by surprise. John Clark is into the game for the Rams for the first time today. He's been seeing less and less minutes. Toronto, Ontario. Stripping it away, here come the Rams, Petit. Hazelton fall away over. Gomes is all net for Scott Hazelton. While we're talking about Hazelton, just a five point game. Seems like Providence has really outplayed URI in this first half, but to the Rams' credit, they're there and they need more of Hazelton offensively. Gomes sets the screen from a graph. Cotillo trying to back in. Back to McGrath. Oh, and you've been saying it. He's got to get hot at some point, but you're right. That was a confident look. And Brown was hanging all over his man there and finally gets called for the person. That was borderline intentional. Yes, I didn't think he played the ball at all on that one. You see Hazelton with that nice little step back. And at 6'8", he's got that nice soft touch. Can handle the basketball as well. They also need to just find him. I think right here, Brown with just, just kind of shoves him to the ground. That was a close one. They called that on the floor. I didn't see him going for the ball at all. Gute was fouled there. And boy, Hazelton just barely by his pinky toe <laughs> saves it on this side of the half court mark. A one arm pass. I don't know what Sullivan was trying to do there. Not going to do it. You, gotta, you need a bounce pass. You can't just fling it. And it's going to belong to the Rams. See, this is where Providence has some good things going. They get the basketball back on the turnover, then they turn it over. That's where you've got to make, you know, the team that turns it over pay the price. I think the key stat is points off turnovers, and the Friars unable to capitalize last few minutes. Seven turnovers apiece for these two teams. Bate over Brewington. Cote with a rebound. And Bate hesitated, the freshman, just take it. You're open, look for the shot. Gomes from behind the arc, rims it around, no good. And both teams have gone cold. I think the zone's been an effective adjustment by URI. They went to it, and Providence is in a cold streak right now offensively. Hazelton from three. That one won't go, and Randall Hankey back in pulls it down. It's a good look, though, for URI. That's, that's a good look from Hazelton. 20 to 15. Score's been locked on this mark for a little while. And for the moments and the minutes that Providence has outplayed, it really is amazing that it's only a five-point game. And Another turnover. Balance. Yeah. Now, the, the turnovers, and I think the job that URI has done on the boards has kept them in the game. And despite not shooting well, just a five-point game. The Rams just down by five, and they've really struggled shooting the ball in this first half. But Andy, it's a low scoring first half, and that favors the Rams in this kind of a matchup. That basket by Hazelton, the only two points we've had in the last three and a half minutes in this game. A three pointer is rimmed in by Parfait Bate. And what happens is now Rhode Island, a lot of confidence. All of a sudden, they find themselves in a two point game, and they start to feel like, hey, you know, we're hanging right in there in a game where they have struggled to shoot it. Nice pass to Hanke. Over Lucky. Or over Clark, I should say, and it's a four-point game. That's a big basket right there by the freshman. I'm not quite sure how he got that shot off either. Using that long-armed reach. Four-point game. Here's Clark. Another three-point attempt this time. The T is too hard. Nice look. Brewington misses the layup. Looked over his shoulder on that one. He looked behind him and lost his concentration. And Sullivan can't answer. And the Friars will take it back. Wow, has it gotten sloppy. Yeah, it really has. That's now no harm done by Providence, but Brewington, you know, I think he felt the footsteps and looked back. You just gotta go strong and finish that thing off. Cotino guarded by Hazelton. Brewington will launch a three. The tip won't go by Gomes. Nice job by Mack to battle with him. Under three minutes to go first half. Bate is 
traveling with the basketball before he could get clobbered. URI on a 19-9 run of their own. The three-pointer helped pull the Rams back into it. Twenty-two, eighteen. Providence, Rhode Island, hanging around quite a bit of this game. Part of which Ron, is because of what is happening on the glass. Now, they've done a great job. They've got a, a plus ten advantage on the boards. Twelve offensive rebounds. Providence, just a couple of field goals in the last six minutes. And again, I, I think it's been the zone. The zone has bothered Providence. It's been a three-two, two-three matchup kind of situation. Jim Barron put it on. Gomes can shoot it from the outside. Brewington, McGrath. Cote, they just need to find the shots, make them. But Rhodey's hung tough with the rebounding and the defense and kept this score as somewhat of a low-scoring first half. Look at the offensive rebounds. Wow. My goodness. Now, they haven't capitalized on a lot of those, but they have been getting second chances. They've been getting the ball back and taking a lot of time off the clock. Just about two and a half left in this first half. Cote makes a move. That's his first missed shot of the day. That was more of a matchup that time by URI defensively, man-to-man. -man. It's been all man-to-man -man by Providence in this first half, and it's been tough for the Rams trying to get good open looks. Hazelton, nice, nice left-handed shot around Cote. Well, that's a great move with his back to the basket. He's their guy. That was a near walk. Here's a three-point attempt, and Gomes can't make it. Brown in traffic. Still can't get it to go. There's a little in the basket for the Friars. Yeah, there really is. They're having trouble making those perimeter shots right now. And for the most part, as we said in this first half, the Rams limiting Providence to just one shot. Only one offensive rebound. Maybe two on that one in the ball game for the Friars. And with a minute and a half to go, the Rams could actually take the lead with a three-pointer. They've got to give them credit. They have struggled to shoot it, but they've played the defense and blocked out. Hazelton missed on his three-point attempt, and Will Daniels follows it up to tie the ball game. Well, no doubt at halftime, Tim Walsh is going to talk about the backboards. He's going to look at that stat, and he's going to talk about boxing out. That'll be, should be written in big letters on the chalkboard at halftime. Cote, here is McGrath. Looked for Gomes, and contact on the far side. I think they're going to call a block on Sullivan. That was a close call right there, too. With Donnie McGrath. Check it out, Ty Sullivan. Yeah, that's a good call. He does not get there. He's like partially in front of Donnie McGrath on that one. Good call on the block. 11-2 run as we saw for the Rams. Loose on the floor, but Cote chases it back down. Less than a minute to go. Providence has had some good looks from the outside, but the player who receives the pass hesitates and doesn't take that open look. Gomes in the paint, nice pass to McGrath, missed the reverse layup. Good look, but I'm, I'm more thinking Gomes down low, make you move, Gomes. You know, and Ryan's so tough in there, a lot of times he ends up at the foul line. He hasn't shot any free throws in this first half. McGrath scoreless in the first half, Brewington scoreless in the first half. And McGrath looked hesitant with his shot offensively, not going up either with the jumper or with that drive with confidence right now. Under 20 seconds. Will Daniels. And Providence will get a chance for the last shot if they want to wait that long. Here's Cote, and the Friars go back in front. <laughs> well, has Cote been the guy offensively for the Friars? Nice dish that time by Brown. And the half-court shot missed, and the Friars just barely hanging on to this lead at halftime. They lost the lead for a moment. It was tied at 22, but now they go into the break with a 24-22 lead. And if you're Jim Barron, you've got to be very happy with the club hanging around a low-scoring game, which is what URI wanted. Goatee's 12, though, leads the Friars, who lead by two.